After you have selected a wheel, check to see if the wheel head has bat pins. If there are bat pins on your wheel head, you'll need to select a bat from the rack and make sure that it is nice and tight. If there's any bit of wiggle in your bat, take two lumps of clay and just secure the bat on each side or you can plug the holes. Okay, make sure it's nice and secure to start with. Two other things to remember, any slurry or mud that you create as you're working, it never goes down the sink, it goes to the reclaim barrel when you clean up. And if you have any pots that are bloopers, um, you can put them on these plaster wedging tables. There are these white plaster tables, they're very porous, very absorbent. If you have pots that are bloopers and they're really piles of mud, if you just put them on these blocks and by the time you're done working, it can be re-wedged so the clay can be recycled. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is to turn on my wheel and make sure that it is in the forward position. You'll notice that some of our wheels have a forward and reverse. Make sure you select forward. You want it to be spinning in the counterclockwise direction so it's spinning away from you. The only exception to this is if you are left-handed and you have previous learn previously learned how to throw in the reverse direction. Okay, so on in the forward position. Um, the next thing, oh, and just remember that there are a million different ways to hold your hands when you're throwing and I'm just going to show you what works for me. This is just one way of many. And also we start off learning how to throw a cylinder because um, any form can start with a cylinder apart from a dinner plate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a small X of water on my wheel head and I'm going to throw down my ball of clay with some bit of force. Really make sure that it's nice and attached. Make sure it's as round as possible. If my aim was a little bit off and it's just a little off to the side, take a moment to adjust it now. It's a lot easier than wrestling with the clay once it's spinning. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is center the clay. This is when the wheel can go as fast as you want it to go. You can floor it if you like, if you're a speed demon. And as my pot gets taller, as I proceed in the process, I want the wheel to spin slower. Um, but definitely, I can start out pretty fast. Um, and my left hand is going to be pushing in towards the center with the heel of my hand. And my right hand is going to be pushing straight down. My hands are always working together. They're stronger that way. So as I go through this process, just notice that whatever I'm doing, my hands are always working together. The other thing that you'll notice is that I'm leaned right over the wheel head and that my elbows are both locked in on my legs. I have a nice tripod base of support. Okay? I'm going to turn my wheel on. As I'm working, I have the sponge in my right hand. The reason for that is if I ever feel friction, I can just squeeze the sponge without removing my hands from the clay. I can just squeeze it and I have water. So my first job here is to push straight down, really make sure that clay is attached to the wheel and that it's not gonna fly off and visit your neighbor, okay? Now I'm gonna take turns. I push in, I push down. I push in, push down. So centering can also be called wedging on the wheel. Push in, push down. And I really like letting my hands take turns. And it's a good habit to get into. You know, it, it prevents you from getting tired. You know, a little piece of clay will really boss you around. You know, and this is also a great technique for centering really large pieces of clay as you're just working it just on one section. Pressing into the center press down. And I'm using a lot of pressure. I'm really pushing the clay hard. If it's not changing shape, you're not pressing hard enough. You know, a lot of pressure and very gently release. If I release the clay too fast, for instance, I'm pushing with all this pressure and I just whoop, pop away from it, the clay notices and you'll actually knock it off center. So when I'm applying all of this pressure, very gently release it. Always release it very slowly so that the clay does not notice that you're no longer touching it. And you may wonder, well, you know, how can I tell if I'm centered? Basically, if it's spinning and it looks like it's standing still, if I can touch it with my finger and it's consistently touching me as it spins, I know it's centered. So it's pretty pretty straightforward. If you're looking at your piece of clay and it's kind of dancing, it's bopping around like this, not centered. It's really important. Centering is the most important thing about working on the wheel. If you rush, rush it and you open it and pull up the walls and proceed with making your pot, 
and it's not quite centered, your pot's gonna be uneven. The walls are gonna be uneven thickness and uneven height, and you'll really fight with it. So it really pays off just to spend a little bit more time centering. Okay, so when you're happy that your clay is centered, and the shape, what I should also mention is the shape that we're centering it to is tall and narrow because the cylinder that we're hoping to make is tall and narrow. We have 10 one and a half pound balls and we're shooting for six inch cylinders, okay? So the next step here is I'm going to open it. I'm gonna hold my left hand nice and steady against the outside of the pot and I'm gonna use my right hand to operate my thumb down just as if it were a drill bit. If I hold my left hand nice and steady, the clay has to stay on center. Okay, I'm drilling it straight down until I'm a quarter inch from the bottom. If I feel any friction, I can just give it a little bit more water. So I'm going straight down. I want a, a bottom opening that has a flat bottom that's an inch and a half wide. So I'm just gonna open it just a little bit now. And if I open it too wide, I won't get the height. So I'm just keeping it a pretty narrow inch and a half opening. Okay, now I'm gonna check the depth of the bottom. I'm gonna stop the wheel for a moment. If I take my pin tool, I'm just gonna insert it into the bottom of my piece and mark it with my finger. And you'll see I have about a quarter inch. Definitely don't wanna drill it any deeper. And this is always something that's good to check rather than hoping for the best and making a beautiful pot and cutting it off and finding out that you have a paper thin bottom and then no bottom after you cut it with the wire. Remember that you cut off your pot with the wire when you're done making it and there's always a little bit of clay left on the wheel head so that quarter inch on the bottom is very important. I'm gonna take a moment now with my four fingers and again my hands are working together. I'm gonna start in the, in the center and go out to the outside edge and I'm gonna compress the bottom. Now this is really important because it prevents future cracking and warping problems. And it's important that your wall thickness is even. So we talk about a quarter inch thickness and that is really an ideal. We want it to be an even quarter inch thickness across the bottom and up the side walls. We don't want it to be a quarter inch and then half inch then an inch thick. And if it's thick to thin, if there's variation in your wall thickness, what that means is that the clay shrinks as it dries, so it'll shrink unevenly, which means that it'll crack. So an even quarter inch wall thickness is ideal in terms of a ratio between volume and weight. It's strong, but it's very um, functional. Um, and it won't crack because it's shrinking evenly. Okay, so I have a flat compressed bottom and I'm ready to pull up the walls. I'm gonna wet my hands and collar it in. So what I did is I just pushed in towards the center the centrifugal force of the wheel, everything naturally wants to become wider. It wants to become a bowl. So anytime that your pot starts to look like a bowl or starts to get wider than you would like it, or starts to get a little wiggly, wet your hands and just cup it back in, color it back in. And I always start off my pulls with the walls tipping inward. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I take my middle finger and I make a little groove at the bottom here. The reason for that is it just gives me a little ledge to pull up against. Now. As I'm pulling, and from here on out in the process, I work at four o'clock. The reason for that is I can see what I'm doing back here, and I'm very strong. And to help you stay back here, keep your elbow locked into your side. And that really helps you, prevent you from troubling around the pot. Because um, you're not very strong when you get back here and you can't see what you're doing. So keep your elbow locked into your side. I use my two middle fingers. And you'll also see that I have the sponge right behind my middle finger. So if I need water, if I start to drag on the clay at all, I just have to squeeze the sponge. And I also find that the sponge prevents me from digging into the pot. So if you're finding that you're tearing off little pieces of clay as you're tracking up on your pool, let the sponge actually touch and it kind of equalizes your pressure. My goal with this is to have two middle fingers directly apart from one another traveling up towards the center as if you were climbing a pyramid. Remember, you have that centrifugal force. So if I think about going straight up or if I kind of let that inside hand push out, you'll have a bull pretty quickly. 